Well, hello and welcome. Uh, and let me start by extending a warm welcome to everybody that's joining us today. My name is Billy Robertson, Technical Customer Manager for GSMA and supporting the customer onboarding to the GSMA Business Network, which will form part of today's showcase event. Now, this is our third showcase event in the series and will focus on blockchain in the telco space as this new technology is making its way into the mainstream and the consciousness of both enterprise and end users alike. We're excited today to be joined by guests both from within GSMA as well as from partners and stakeholders globally. Now, we've got an information-packed agenda today, so let me take a minute to talk you through what you can expect from today's session. We'll be joined first off by Tim Hack, who heads up the research and consulting strategy for GSMA Intelligence. And Tim will give us an insight into the current environment within telco and blockchain and insights into their maturity and scope, and also what investments are being made within the space. You'll then hear from our very own Shamit Bat, Director of Blockchain and Roaming at GSMA, and Shamit will talk to the long-term vision of an industry-wide network the GSMA has now launched, named the Business Network, and the key business opportunities as we see them. We'll then hear from Atria partners from Vodafone and PCCW Global, and are pleased to be joined today by Chris Flett, Senior Transformation Manager at Vodafone, Manuela Godek, Global Innovation Lead for Blockchain at the Vodafone Group, and Jahar Steif, Assistant Vice President for New Technologies at PCCW Global. And they're going to share their insights into collaboration utilizing blockchain with Colt and Consult Connect by PCCW Global, and how they work collectively to improve interoperability processes. I'm then going to take five minutes to talk through the immediate business opportunities presented by the use of the GSMA eBusiness Network for wholesale roaming and let you know what we've done to make it really simple to start benefiting from blockchain with the fast track accelerator program that we put in place. I'll then be passing on to Adit Maharaj who joins us from MTN and Adit will take us through their reasoning for using blockchain, what issues it's been solving, and their reasons for joining the eBusiness Network and its accelerator program. Now, today's session is going to be recorded, so it will be available to everyone post-session to revisit. And as we go through today's session, we know that there'll be lots of good questions you want to ask. So in order to keep the session flowing, we'll ask you to please just submit them through the chat function, and we'll cover up as many questions in the Q&A at the end of the session as we can. So any questions that we're unable to cover on today's session will be responded to in the follow-ups from today's presentation. So don't worry, if we're unable to get to you today, you will get answers. So an action-packed agenda ahead of us. And with that in mind, let me take the opportunity to pass across to Tim for our first segment. Tim, over to you. Thank you very much, Vinny, and, and great to be here. Um, Hi, everybody. Um, as Vinny said, my, my name is Tim Hatt, um, and I work in the GSMA Intelligence Group. Uh, I'm going to talk about what we've seen with blockchain the last few years, and more importantly, where um, it's going at an industry level, as hopefully as a useful segue into the discussions for the next hour. So if we can go to the next slide, please. Um, I, I think it's worth just reminding ourselves uh, the underlying technology that blockchain works on, um, because this speaks to its its asset value and and the various use cases that we're seeing it deployed in. Um, so blockchain sits on on DLTs, distributed ledgers. It is a type of that, um, along with some other um, uh, areas and and frameworks um, listed there on the left. This has always been something. Blockchain has always been something that is um, capable of recording both physical or tangible assets, as well as um, intangible assets. Um, and it's in both of those areas, but especially in the intangibles, where we're starting to see more practical use of, of the technology. Um, of course, this works through decentralized um, uh, connectivity as a ledger for recording transactions. Um, but we're seeing that really scale to, to a number of use cases, a number of which were not originally present when blockchain sort of became a thing five years ago. So we can work on many types of assets. If we can go to the next slide, please. Ultimately, the, the 
currency of blockchain and, and why it has um, begun to scale um, quite significantly, uh, both in, in telecom uh, use cases and other industries, is that it's about trust. We're bypassing a need for um, a central single party authority to verify transactions. It's decentralized. Everybody has a common view uh, of the overall network and of the transaction status within that. Um, and there's, you know, point four there, you know, participants um, can, you know, record transactions in a way that is visible to anybody. And that's really important when you get into applications that involve distributed assets. We'll talk about um, energy systems and solar and wind applications. When you get into the digital um, content sphere and media, um, well, particularly the metaverse. Um, and when we talk about roaming, and we'll talk about those, you know, in, in a few minutes. But ultimately, the implications come down to having a transparent single view of the truth that can be ultimately accounted for by many parties um, working towards the same ends. Next slide, please. I think what has changed um, in the last few years, though, is the base of objects that can be uh, connected through blockchain technology. And what we're showing here is our forecast for IoT uh, connections uh, across the world um, over the next decade. And you can see that you know, if there were around 15 or so billion um, IoT objects uh, as of last year, you know, we expect that to more than double um, by the end of this decade to, to over 37 billion. Now that's a huge number, obviously, but what matters is which of the industry verticals are really driving that up, because that is the underpinnings for where blockchain technology can connect distributed objects. Um, be that in uh, uh, agricultural applications, be it in buildings, in transportation, um, in energy systems, and utilities, these sorts of numbers have and are reaching a scale where the efficiency and the cost efficiency of blockchain can really be a key asset for running a system in an economical and trustworthy way. We can go to the next slide. So in theory, that means that you can use the technology almost anywhere. And I think this was something we saw, as I said, when it was first talked about five years ago, as a sort of big new thing that can disrupt a whole bunch of applications. Now, part of that has been true and part of that has been hype. And I think, you know, some of these applications here that we first looked at three or four years ago haven't come to pass, but increasingly uh, some of them are. And you can see that in the supply chain and logistics uh, areas. You can see it in energy and utilities. Um, you can see it in parts of manufacturing operations. And you can see it in terms of contracts that link through uh, anything from real estate um, to other applications uh, demanding a, a verifiable solution. So there is a lot. But if we go to the next slide, you know, I think from a from a mobile operator perspective in the telecom sector, whereas the net used to be cast fairly wide, now people are focusing on a few, you know, fewer higher value use cases where there are clear um, deployment uh, sort of rationale for it, as well as partnership opportunities. And so I put four on here, um, you know, IoT identity and roaming, media and fintech. So just briefly on those. Um, in the IoT space, we talked about, or I showed the chart showing our projections to how to get to that 37 billion objects. Home and wholesale energy is re a really growing area. We know that renewable energy uh, is a key part of telco um, energy efficiency strategy um, and overall sustainability. Um, we're seeing blockchain being used to link distributed solar uh, photovoltaic and wind farms through smart energy systems. Um, that's a really key target, um, which is being really led by European telcos, but starting to expand into other regions. We see it in automotive and logistics um, for sure, uh, given the transient nature of those assets and being able to link their location and connectivity status. We're also seeing it or starting to see it in the electric vehicle market where charging points are linked to driving records 
and where the development of the so-called prosumer is rising, where people can sell excess energy back to the grid that their vehicle doesn't consume. Um, and, and that type of system can be on by blockchain. Um, and we're starting to see some really interesting applications. Shamit and some others are going to certainly talk about roaming in more detail. Um, suffice to say that you know, the blockchain for roaming is, is clearly has an industry consensus about um, creating a simplified way of settling uh, transactions in what is a very diverse and complex roaming marketplace. A lot of potential there. And then newer in the media space, um, I think we're starting to see interesting applications as content becomes digitized and specifically that digital content is monetized. So non-fungible tokens, uh, and, and how they are uh, distributed for um, you know, digital slices of content. Um, we're seeing it in ad tech. We're seeing platforms based on blockchain um, invested in by the mobile operators for monitoring content security, um, particularly as the metaverse starts to scale. Um, Telefonica Tech, uh, the OS platform, has an interesting application there. Um, and I think we're going to start to see more of that as, as this grows. And then finally, um, I think we can confidently speak to fintech and the crypto payments um, for operators involved there. Clearly, there's a blockchain use case in the settlement space. So if we can go to the last slide to round things out. I think just coming back to the roaming example, um, which is uh, you know core to how this industry operates, you know we we did some research in the autumn last year and produced a report on the future of roaming um, post COVID. And one of the key questions we asked, um, you know, a survey of operators worldwide was, well, what would make roaming simpler? And you can see there the number one consideration by almost a third of telcos is consolidating the roaming operations uh, under one roof, and that includes settlement. And I think that's one of the big reasons why we've had consensus on um, using blockchain as a means for streamlining um, transaction verification and settlement and why there's such a, a, a broad-based industry buy-in there. So where you can find an application that is clear cost and efficiency savings and unites people heading towards the same me uh, end um, is really the fertile ground that we're seeing for blockchain. So a lot of advancements, a lot of evolution, um, and I think we'll see more as that IoT space starts to scale in those key verticals. Hopefully that um, sets the scene. I am now going to hand it over to Shamit um, to take the next uh, part of the segment. You can contact me offline. Um, this is GSMA Intelligence and what we do. Um, I'm happy to go through details of, of our product um, uh, offline. Thanks very much. Shamit, over to you. Thank you very much, Tim. And uh, I am Shamit Bhatt, and I'm the director for blockchain at Roaming at the GSMA. Now, as Winnie mentioned at the uh, start of the discussion, I'll focus on uh, the GSMA's vision with blockchain and also uh, touch upon a bit about what the e-business network is. Now, before I do that, I want you to take three clear messages from the discussions today. Uh, firstly, I would like you to know the, uh, where our blockchain focus has led us to in terms of our journey. Uh, secondly, I would like you uh, to take this message back to your business uh, that the GSMA e-business network is commercially viable, it's commercially ready for operations. Uh, and lastly, I would like you to know that you need to start your business planning now so you can benefit from uh, you know, the blockchain technology and also uh, to an extent through the e-business network. Uh, and uh, uh, one of the key uh, complexities and challenges which the 5G and IoT worlds are going to bring about and also the opportunities which are going to come forward. So you need to be prepared for all of those. And I think this is one of the ways by which you can you know, be prepared for it. So let me go to the next slide and uh, start with the industry vision, uh, which is uh, we call as the shared distributed ledger technology industry vision. Now, our vision is to build a ubiquitous network of operators, partners, and larger ecosystem players such as the vendors. And the purpose is twofold. Firstly, we would like to streamline the existing interoperator processes. 
And we believe by doing so, what we'll be able to achieve in the long run is to unlock new monetization opportunities for the entire ecosystem. Now, to contextualize that, uh, some of the conservative estimates suggest that the telco blockchain revenue stands anywhere between $1.8 billion or above by 2024. Now, what contributes to this? Uh, of course, there are lots of use cases wherein operators can themselves roll out some of the blockchain based services. And there are some uh, collaborative use cases wherein operators need to come together. Uh, and, uh, you know, there are lots of uh, different areas which we ourselves have been exploring within the GSMA work uh, over the last five years or so. We started with 18 different areas and realized a lot of the opportunities initially as we see it come from things like wholesale settlement, uh, from blockchain as a service uh, kind of, uh, uh, you know, use cases, uh, payments, uh, identity, fraud and supply chain. Having said that, this is what we see today, but there are lots of other use cases that I mentioned. There are 18 uh, areas in total wherein, you know, you could see more traction from the other use cases. Now, before we get into the details of the e-business network, I would like to, uh, you to visualize what uh, uh, the network is going to look like. Now, you need to think of the network as, uh, you know, you have routers at your home which connect all your devices. And when your devices are connected to the router, you can load any application on your devices and you can basically uh, use those applications. Uh, the the e-business network is very similar, wherein every entity on the network has a node. Now, this node could be run by the operator themselves, wherein, you know, in the roaming terms, they are a connected operator. Or this uh, node could be run by, let's say, GSMA on behalf of the operator or another vendor of choice of the operator. So there are all of those possibilities. And once they have a node running for uh, themselves, an operator can run multiple applications, which could be some of these areas or some something completely different. Uh, next slide, please. So at this point, let's define what the GSMA e-business network is. Now, the GSMA e-business network is the blockchain network of the telecom industry. Uh, it's a secure and a scalable network, and it's designed to be a multi-party, multi-vendor environment, uh, which means that you can decide how you work on the network. It's completely flexible uh, in that fashion. Uh, and it's a network which has been built on the Hyperledger Fabric uh, technology. Of course, when the time comes, we would also expand uh, this to run other uh, ledger technologies and other ledger protocols. It's a private permission network that's uh, in order to ensure that we can uh, we, we know who's there on the network and uh, the security of the known parties uh, is maintained on the network. And it's been designed uh, in a way to uh, manage all kinds of interoperator processes. Uh, so you can see on the screen, uh, you know, it's a complete ecosystem coming together because blockchain, uh, you know, in our view is an ecosystem play and the network has been designed to facilitate that. Now, there are lots of different use cases which will eventually be supported, be it in fraud management, payments, IoT, uh, identity or RAN data sharing, for example. However, we are starting with uh, clearing and settlement, uh, which is roaming clearing and settlement. Next slide, please. So before we get on to the other details, let me just talk a bit about what our vision for roaming is. Uh, as that's the first uh, big use case we've initiated this network with. Uh, so our vision is to enable a direct pair to pair model for roaming uh, because end of the day, that's where the blockchain technology is at its best. And uh, uh, we believe that what this will do is to enable a frictionless wholesale roaming uh, settlement ecosystem, wherein because of uh, the use of blockchain technology and the integration capabilities it provides, you'll have faster payments and faster settlement, therefore much healthier revenue assurance. Now, opportunities exist in the end-to-end -end process, right from contract management, data clearing, settlement, and finally payments. Of course, uh, it's a huge elephant there, so we take it a step at a time. We, we are uh, you know, uh, looking at different parts of the process, and we'll see a lot more on you know, what's on offer later on uh, in the presentations. Okay, so 
in terms of the ecosystem, let's have a quick look of how this is going to change. What you see on the left hand side is the current legacy process, wherein you know two parties come together, they sign a deal with each other. Let's say it's a discounting agreement, and this is typically uh, done in a semi-automated way, wherein the two parties you know agree to information and they go down separate routes, and then they, there is a process which gets kicked off, wherein there are lots of downstream systems and processes which are independent fed of this information. And that's where the you know, root cause of problem lies because what that leads to is creation of multiple sources of truth. Now, after that, what we do is we've got, in some cases, operators on, let's say, party A side and operator on party B side, either running this process themselves or by the use of agents, wherein there's a lot of back and forth between these different parties, wherein uh, because of multiple sources of truth, it creates what in blockchain terms we call as the double counting problem. So everything gets checked twice, obviously for the right reasons, but that leads to a lot of friction that leads to uh, you know, a lot of back and forth, and that eventually leads to disputes, and there is a lot of time lost uh, in, in this kind of uh, management of the end-to-end -end process. Now, on the right-hand side, what you see is the model we've been able to create with the use of blockchain technology, wherein you still come together as roaming partners to sign a roaming agreement. However, the agreement is signed uh, in what we call in blockchain terms as a smart contract, wherein the two parties not only agree to a charging model, but they also agree to the underlying executable logic via a smart contract. That means even if you go away taking this information uh, in terms of the agreement that was signed, the execution happens with exactly the same piece of code. Therefore, that takes away that uh, you know duality or the multiple uh, sources of truth problem. Uh, it you know everything is done from a single source of truth. So uh, by using this technology for solving this very specific purpose, what we are able to achieve is to reduce a lot of these calculation-based disputes and. Uh, what that does is it means that you can have much faster settlement and what that implies is, you know, you will have much healthier revenue assurance. So at this point, I would like to hand over to Chris, who is going to talk about a slightly different use case. And this gives you an example of, uh, you know, the kind of things which the e-business network will be able to support in future. And later on, of course, we'll delve more on the roaming uh, use case. Uh, thank you very much. Chris, over to you. Perfect. Um, yeah, thank you. And uh, uh, my name is Chris Fleck. I'm a board of home business. And, uh, you know, just following on from, from Tim and Shamit there, what, what we'll talk about today is, is how we take um, the concepts we've just been just been looking at, put into a, a kind of fixed line delivery uh, and a fixed line capability uh, process. So you've, you've seen what's going on from a roaming point of view and, and actually almost, you know, described pretty much word for word what I'm just about to describe for, for the fixed line uh, connectivity. If we go on to the first um, slide, you'll see that really the problem statement that, that, that Shamit's just beautifully articulated is, is the same in, in the fixed line space as well. The commercial processes are, are based on legacy, legacy IT, the very manual processes, it's very inefficient and prone to prone to error uh, and disputes are, are something that I think we just kind of live with today. And there's, you know, and there's loads and loads of reasons, uh, you know, why that we've all got our own source of the truth. We all work, work independently um on on these uh, you know on, on these on, on, the, on the commercials on each side and it just creates a, a, a kind of stress in the relationships um between uh, certainly ourselves and, and partners and, and partners around the world so it's it's a really big big problem that we've noticed in in our fixed line world we've spotted opportunities and, and what can happen through the good work that's been done done in, in roaming and we decided that actually you know let, let's not try and fix this on our own let's let's work in a, in a much more uh, collaborative manner uh, and that's why we, uh, we we reached out and we, we started to to try and understand what was going on uh, in in blockchain with roaming and, and other and other solutions and see how we could how we could take that forward and effectively you know get rid of all the delays improve the data quality and have a, a kind of seamless process that just works uh, on, a, on a daily basis uh, so with that i think uh, we'll hand over to the 
to Manuela uh, from the next slide and, and Shahal to Bob. As Chris has mentioned, this is a real business problem in the industry, and we recognize that we cannot continue to try to solve this um, alone in silos. So we have decided for collaboration and set up a network um, of carriers, vendors, and industries to really co innovate on that because com communication providers need to work together to meet this challenge together for a rising demand on increased connectivity so and this is a really true business uh, to business complex uh, problem and with um, while um, using emerging technology to totally transform the industry so we with blockchain we create a shared service repository and are using smart contracts for commercial agreements and automation and while we co-innovate on this together and prove the value of the solution which we really bring to production already now we work with uh, standardization bodies and to drive really a standardization across the industry and uh, drive adoption and automation across uh, the whole network and to scale up further Next slide, please. <clears throat> so the business is about providing data services to our business end customers. And to do so, to really ensure international connectivity for those business customers, communication providers need to work to together to provide services together. As said, this is a very, very complex B2B business process managed in a very typical order to cash process. We spotted that the problem is really in the middle where the different partners have a variety of service status. So the service data is completely unaligned, inventories are not matching, and this is resulting in an, in a different view for financial uh, liability and thus delayed payments. We decided to fix that problem, which is in the middle of the business process, and really wanted to start there, where we think we can achieve the main value. So, and that is why we have here really uh, concentrated on building the shared service repository um, and to streamline the uh, process later and to, to really accelerate the payments faster. So, Shaha, do you want to add your view? Uh, thank you, Manuela. Uh, yes, so uh, before we dive deep into the actual technical implementation of this project, let us uh, actually zoom out for a second and look at, at the end-to-end -end process. Tim, in his opening statement, mentioned uh, telecom as a use case and supply chain management as a use case, and we're actually taking both together, putting both together. We're taking, taking supply chain management in the telecom sector. So if you look at a service that is delivered, uh, between two carriers to serve a third party, or maybe sometimes it's even more than just two carriers who are then uh, put in a chain of supply of a service. And uh, it could be because of geographical coverage or service footprint where some, some carriers need some sorts of service varieties that are not available from 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 uh, by themselves and they need uh, technical partners for those uh, a service life cycle typically starts from an inquiry from a customer going through an order service delivery uh, service op operations and maintenance and ends up in in settlement and booking so just to give us a, 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 an industry lookout uh, the the items shown in green here are items which are currently under development by MEF, for example. The items shown on blue at the end were the the, the items that were actually mentioned by Tim, the 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 uh, settlement uh, projects done by GSMA and also by CBAN. And the items in red are the items, the current project which we are handling, uh, which handle uh, a repository of existing services that have already been delivered to customers. How do we account for those services and how do we prepare billing statements and build them efficiently? And as you can see, there are also some, some items which are still in black. Those are still pending development and pending uh, pending some sort of, of work. Uh, I mean, we, we're only, uh, even with this project, we're only halfway through as an industry. Next slide, please. So now we really deep dive into, into the project. Uh, so, We've mentioned multiple sources of truth. Each carrier has their own uh, BSS OSS platform and they have their own repository of services which they either sell or buy from their partners. And sometimes uh, what I sell to you isn't what you think you buy from me and vice versa. 
So what we're doing is we're generating uh, two reports. We generate a report of what we think we sell to you. You gener generate a report of what you think you buy from us. And we upload those two into a DLT and we match the records. And typically when there are multiple sources of truth, we end up with uh, some records which are a full match. You agree that what I sell to you is what you buy from me. Sometimes there is partial match because yes, you agree you do buy that service, but the details don't match. Either the starter and they don't match. Maybe the technical details don't match. Maybe the pricing isn't correct. I think I said it to you for $1,000. You think you only owe me 800. And sometimes there's a, there's a mismatch. Records really do not match. And we created a list of criteria of what constitutes the match, what constitutes the partial, a partial match and a mismatch, and what is a sufficient match for billing purposes. Then we're going through uh, an AI-assisted process, which basically gives us some hints of what would be uh, a way to create, a, to turn a partial match into a full match. And, uh, and we end up with, with, a, with a list which, which, include, which includes more matched services than mismatches or partial matches. And obviously what is matched is basically ready for billing because you both agree that what I'm selling to you is what you buy from me. What you're selling to me is what I buy from you. Those are ready to be billed. What you see here in the dotted uh, uh, red line is the feedback loop because if we do find some mismatches or partial matches, we do try to fix the data on both sides so that on the next run, it, they, will, they will match. So currently those are still done uh, manually, meaning we generate the reports manually, we upload them to the system manually, we manually fix whatever needs to be fixed in our, in our backend systems, in, in our back office systems, the BSS or SS. Eventually in the long run, we, turn, we, we plan to, to automate that and run that through API. A lot of, a lot of uh, uh, development on that. Let's go to the next uh, slide then. <coughs> so uh, once we reach uh, once we've reached the list of matched circuits uh, and we, we, we basically have more matched than, than, than mismatches, again, we upload that to the DLT and we create billing statements. Billing statements basically uh, uh, consist of lists of services which both parties agree that the data they hold on, on, on both sides is good enough to generate uh, an invoice. And uh, each billing statement has a statement ID, which is uh, logged into the blockchain, which means once it's logged in, both parties agree it is a single source of truth and basically ready to be to be invoiced. Manuela, back to you. Yes, thank you. Next slide, please. <clears throat> The billing statements compiled are um, based on smart contracts and thus they are immutable and auditable. So this data can then be used to be put on the invoice. And once we have, re then this will allow the service supplier to um, really draft the invoice based on blockchain data and sell it to the buyer. Once the buyer receives this invoice based on blockchain, the buyer knows, okay, there, there can't be there can't be a different uh, data set. So this is the true data we have agreed upon. So there is no need anymore for discrepancies or reconciliation, thus eliminating all the effort we have had in the past for reconciliation. And this is then really automating the full process up to the invoicing received and will enable us to really settle and pay immediately because it's based on true data set we have agreed upon in, in, the, in the beginning. And this is coming from finance, the real true innovation we see here. Really use <coughs> blockchain-based data for our payments. And this will completely transform the comp uh, business process for the whole industry. Next slide, please. And we aim to go one step further to have a fully automated business process with APIs. So currently for the scope as defined in the middle of the business process, but later on as we prove the value of this solution for the whole quote to cash process. This really was the ambition to fully digitalize the quote to cash process as for service delivery. Thank you. Over to Chris. Yeah, just the final slide then, if you can just flick over. So I think, you know, what you've heard um, has, has really worked well for us so far with our, with our partners. You can see um, here, here on the screen, we've already 
created a, effectively a single sort of a uh, sort of agreed truth. You know, and it's so important. You know, that piece. It's obviously the, the DNA of, of what blockchain can do for us, and, and it has absolutely been proven uh, that it's working in the uh, in the fixed line connectivity world as as well as roaming in other use cases. So a big a big tick in the box for us. What does that mean? It means we're kind of processing, you know, much faster, right? We can process at speed with less effort as well. So, you know, not only can you get things done quickly, it's not actually taking you the resources that you, you, you've needed in the past. That, that that just relates then into better cash flow. And ultimately, relationships, you know, between between partners is, is greatly improved. And, you know, and that is that's customer experience. Obviously, you know, I, you know, from our point of view, we're a customer uh, and, uh, uh, you know, and uh, and a provider to 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 the to all our partners, right? And if we're improving that relationship through through better processes, that that's a good thing. But not only that, we're we're seeing this that our customers, our end customers, that you know, the clients that sit beyond our our boundaries are, are seeing an improvement as well. It allows us to process our orders and our services faster. And therefore, that gives them a better experience. We've got less issues internally to deal with the problems, which, let's be honest, we try and hide these things from our end clients, they, they, but they see these things happening. Right? They know we've got delays and things, and we're improving that. So, so far, you know, this is really, um, you know, proving to, to everybody within, within Vodafone and those involved in our partners that this is, we're on the right track, this is the right thing to do, and it's, it's very exciting going forward, I will say. Uh, that concludes um, our particular presentation. I hope you've enjoyed that. I'll, I'll now hand back to Vinny. Thank you so much, Chris. Uh, and thank you all uh, for a great example, a great use case of, of what can be done. Uh, now, I'd like to spend five minutes talking about what's available as part of the e-business network that Shamit introduced earlier. Because increasing settlement uh, and efficiencies for wholesale roaming is an immediate opportunity that we see. And the eBizzers network is live and operational now to help support this. So we're providing a suite of services now to improve these wholesale roaming efficiencies. And you'll see here now two of those are linked to access to the network itself. And the other two apps that are built on top to leverage the speed and security and start to, to streamline this wholesale negotiation settlement process. Let me take you through them. So we've got first and foremost the e-business network itself, uh, and that allows access to the networks and that connection of partners that are using the network, as Shabit mentioned earlier. Next up, then we've got GSMA Node, and this will facilitate that access to the network. Now we've made it incredibly simple to do so by providing everything that you would need to get up and running, including configuration, deployment maintenance and all of the back end support that's required to get you up and running hosted by the GSMA. And it's designed to take all of the complexity and heavy lifting out of joining for operators. We'll set up the network for you with just a few key details that we need from yourself. So that's about access to the network itself. And then on top of that, we build the applications that, that help you streamline your processes. First of all, we've got the negotiator app and this is where you'll have the ability to negotiate your roaming agreements with partners both on and off the e-business network using the online workflow that's available. So within the negotiator tool itself, you can, for example, configure terms of an agreement with your roaming partner using that workflow. Your roaming partner would receive an offer through their negotiator app and have the opportunity to review it. The partner can then change the terms of the agreement or approve it if it's acceptable to them. And this process is, is simply passed back and forth until both partners agree and approve the deal. So what do you get here? No duplication of effort, no miscommunication of terms, and all of this recorded on the blockchain to ensure this single source of truth that we mentioned earlier. That you've also got the settlement tool. And here, you'll use the system to calculate your net settlement amounts with your roaming partners. Again, blockchain comes into play here to ensure that you've got that single source of truth and there are, are no you know, misalignments and you've got certainly a reduction uh, of, of misalignments at least anyway. 
So again, within the system, you've got the opportunity here to, to create and receive and agree your aggregate tap data uh, and your BCE reports with roaming partners. You can use it to create those settlement reports to support both your monthly and your periodic invoicing of partners. And you can also use it to reconcile those differences in calculation and negotiate any calculation discrepancies through the system. So, for example, you know, you have the ability to, to split the difference in half, reject the difference or suggest alternatives all through the workflow itself. If we go to the next slide, please. Now, on top of that, we're also adding additional features to improve and further automate the processes that are available. And we'll be implementing those over the coming weeks and months. The first one you see on the left here is an important one, GSMA compatibility. We will be providing the ability in the Negotiate app for it to be used for creating and sharing deal offers with both blockchain and non-blockchain based partners. So you'll have the opportunity to use the system to create your deals and offers and then send them to a partner that isn't on the network, giving you the ability to manage separate workflows in one system. This is proving a really popular addition for those that want to be able to you know, automate much of the deal building process they have now in place and also allowing for managing blockchain and as I say, non-blockchain deals all under the one system. And then within that, you know, the GSMA negotiator and settlement tools, we're also bringing in additional elements as we work towards having the ability to build the deal end to end for our customers. So, you know, with that, you've got the integration of AA12 and AA13 documents into the system, forecasting and analytic tools will be available, as well as multiple signatory deal sign-offs as well. So as it moves down the system uh, and through the sign-off process, you can add additional signatures uh, where required. So it's really good additions being added to the network as well. And we're also looking just at the potential of including payment solutions that are triggered by the smart contract. So, you know, you've got this ability to complete the interoperator payments as well. Uh, so that's a conceptual item for now, but something we're certainly uh, looking at moving into the future. Uh, next slide, please. Now, importantly, any operator that's wanting now to measure the efficiency gains, you know, versus their existing process or indeed go live now, will have the opportunity to do so through our accelerator offer and can join the next batch of launch partners. Now, our accelerator offer would include, as you'll see here, three months of complimentary access to all four of the services I've just mentioned to test those efficiency gains. There's simple and quick onboarding that's provided by the GSMA team will do, as I mentioned, much of the heavy lifting so that you and your teams don't have to. There's comprehensive technical support and training provided. And importantly, we will work to onboard your recommended partners where required. So if you have a preferred partner you want to work with, then we're able to onboard that partner. So you've got that ability to work and test live. Now, a full demo of the product, demo of the tools and full breakdown of the no obligation trial period and any associated commercials post trial, should you wish to test further, or go live are available now. So do reach out to us and we'll make arrangements to show you more. So at this point, uh, that's me. I'd now like to pass across to Adit to give us his, his insights uh, into why they've chosen to join us on the e-business network journey, uh, how they're benefiting from the accelerator program we have in place and the problems that blockchain is solving for them. So Adit, over to you. All right, th thank you, Vinny, uh, for that uh, overview. And uh, before I start, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'd like to introduce myself, uh, Adip Maraj from MTN Global Connect uh, as an international roaming manager for, for Europe. So uh, just before we get into uh, the details of uh, this small little presentation, I would like to applaud uh, uh, all the speakers because a lot of the stuff already resonates with what MTN Global Connect has already begun with and what they're doing right now. The last of which is gonna be uh, the adoption of the e-business network. So uh, that is something to consider. 
and 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 as well you know we, we talk about blockchain we talk about the benefits of blockchain how it does it's scalable uh coming back to someone you mentioned it's, it's all about trust uh coming back to what manuela said it's about the smart contracts but has this actually been put into effect has our industry players really went out there and done the work and seen it for themselves because there's a lot of information uh, with regards to blockchain and how it works, the challenges, the risks, benefits. But actually working on it, you know, it makes a big difference. And, uh, and I'm glad to say, you know, driven by uh, leadership within MTN Global Connect, uh, Mr. Arne Castle and our group head, uh, he has given us the opportunity to go forward and investigate and, you know, explore these kinds of situations with regards to the new technology. So uh, having said that, uh, can we go to the next slide, guys? All right, so, so based on what I just mentioned, you know, uh, how Global Connect started investigating and going through towards the blockchain and even beyond. And uh, these were the points that Global Connect, you know, as, as a group felt was, was very essential in what we wanna do and what we wanna aspire to and how we align to technology uh, and of course, uh, moving forward. So if we look at uh, the pillars over here, you know, we're looking at concerns, enabler, the business model and strategy and leadership. So just touching quickly on these things, the, the biggest concern of course is our industry challenges. What is it happening? What is making the difference? How are we going forward? So we, we all understand when it comes to settlements, it's a big pain, all right? It takes a, a massive amount of time just to settle these things. The 35 to 40 days does not stand. Trust me, you know, we've been through it, you know, looking at the new technology for IR, you know, the fourth industrial revolution, looking at the technologies, SDN, NFV, you know, uh, EC, uh, MEC, CC, how are we moving forward with it? Does where we stand now, the normal tariff actually align to the actual settlements going forward? How do we align and discriminate between these technologies? So what does that mean? Blockchain is now gaining prominence. We, the buzzword is blockchain BCE. What are we doing to it? So is it a showstopper? Are we able to conform to that? You know, but in line with that as well, we need to understand the business models. We, we're working right now currently on the legacy business as we stand. All right. So we need to actually cater for the new dimension going towards the technical aspect. You know, we need the C-suite to actually uh, help us and lead us and guide us in a sense where they can accommodate uh, the planning in a sense for uh, how we do investments. That actually bodes on us as individuals, showing the executive and management that yes, it is something worthwhile we need to invest. All right. And of course, your strategy. Uh, we, uh, there was already mention of uh, blockchain as a service, as Shamit mentioned earlier on. Very similar over here. What are we going to do? Can we adopt it? Outsourcing, managed network services. Is it a fully outsourced thing? Uh, can we use it internally? So there's a combination of, of, of both of here. And as I mentioned, leadership, you need our leaders to help us move forward. So these are the things that we need to look and that's how MTN Global Connect uh, decided to go into the blockchain avenue. Uh, next slide, guys. Yeah, so uh, looking at this and, and, and aligning very much to what Vinny and, and Shamit said earlier on, you know, to understand what we are doing and, and who are your stakeholders within your business itself? Who's going to be involved looking into your e-business network uh, specific to uh, GSMA? You know, who are your participants and what are your expectations? So from MTN Global Connect's point of view, you know, I've highlighted uh, the roaming operation and commercial with finance. So, so what does that actually mean in a nutshell? From the roaming ecosystem, we're looking at BC, BCE. What does it mean? All right. How does it come to? Manuela mentioned smart contracts. Yes, smart contracts is very important depending on how we use it and if it's aligned. All right. So we look at the settlement aspect. Uh, we look at reconciliation. So depending on what you do on, on your normal manual versus on your automation. So looking at that aspect, how we're doing it. And that already dovetails into finance is it quantifiably. So if we look into that, are we making any return on investment using the blockchain? What does it mean to us? So are we able to then use the same money we are actually saving from the reconciliation 
and investing it back into the business. So that dovetails very, you know, nicely into it comfortably. So commercial, all right, requirements, production and integration in-house. So if we look at technology wise and, and, and leading towards the 5G, we know there's a, a lot of differences with the 5G technology. So to entertain blockchain on 5G, it, it, it's a lot of investment that's involved over there. And how do we adapt to it? Looking at the e-business network, uh, and Vinny mentioned it's fully outsourced uh, or hosted rather. So what is the cost implications that means to you as an MO? So are we gonna be involved in actually using it ourselves or are we gonna let them use it? But we still need to know whether we can afford that uh, aspect. Next slide, guys. Yeah, so here we go, uh, looking at the evaluation uh, with regards to the e-business e and how we are looking forward towards it. What are the future savings? So point one to five, actually it summarizes it very, very succinctly, all right? So when we're looking at the contract, and now this is talking about the smart contract, all right? So we have, of course, different aspects within the smart contract, legal uh, perspective, operations, and contracting sign up. So what we need to do is determine how, how quick can we turn around that time of day. Uh, personally speaking, within uh, MTN Global Connect, there is a, a time difference. It takes a long time for a contract to actually be signed. I'm sure a lot of you guys have experienced that. But within a smart contract uh, and digitalization and, and digital contracting signing, it actually alleviates that pain for us. Uh, the Clearinghouse and GSMA, uh, the assess the billing and the settlement. So what do we need to do over here? How, how quick is the turnaround time on that? So if, if the Clearinghouse takes at least uh, two weeks to do the actual, uh, what you call it, in billing and the settlements, compared to GSMA. Now, when you're looking at the blockchain, and I've already trialed this thing out, uh, the blockchain itself takes not even, to download the actual settlement figures, it takes less than two minutes, all right? But compare it overall, when you're doing the actual settlement, how long does it take, you know? So those are the things that we need to look. Looking at settlement analysis as well, is it a faster settlement period? So we need to determine time-wise, because time is something that we don't have on our side over here. How long does it take, all right? And are we making any savings on that, all right? When we come to the dispute resolution, how, how does this thing work here? Full flows for negotiation, resolution, offers, and ability to settle over the network. So what is it that we need to see? Of course, we have disputes when we are doing our settlements, you know? So can the, the blockchain itself help us? Can it pinpoint directly to where we are going? What do, what do we need to do on that aspect of there? And of course, the last but not least is overall. So looking at the entire uh, evaluation process and the overall will, will, will stem to uh, lead back to the financials, right? With regards to production and integration, that is our cost. Uh, is it worthwhile for us to do it by ourselves or outsource it? And then looking at the manpower. So as Emma knows, how many people are we using, or resources rather, are we using to do your settlement process? You know, looking from the clearinghouse, looking from the MNO, back to the roaming partner, back to CFO levels for, for sign off. So that's already four resources you're using. That means if you're using blockchain, you know, we can reduce it to at least one individual. So one individual in, in your MNO can take care of this. There is one concern though. All right, and, and this has been raised already, is that to sign off a bill owing a Romy partner a million dollars, your CFO might not be too glad on that, right? So that's an internal process that needs to be ratified internally. But still, nonetheless, it will still take you less resources currently uh, to work with than how we are doing it right now. Uh, next slide, guys. All right, so, so here we're looking at our end goal here. What is it that we wanna achieve and how we wanna achieve this thing? So looking at the sustainable business case, we need to re-energize our model. So if, if you click again, so it'll come up uh, full. Just click again. Yeah, thank you. So if, we, if we're looking at this over here, the key factors versus what we wanna focus on. So as you can see over here, points one to four, from innovation right down to limitation. How does this 
affect us as MNOs. Looking at our sustainable business case, we need to look into the business model, what we're having now compared to what we want to do and where we want to go to. All right. So Global Connect, I know, led by Arne, uh, we looked at the strategy and where we want to go and how we want to go there. You know, what, what is our aim? And then we started deep diving into the, the wholesale roaming domain, right? So what we are doing exactly, shaping a new path. That's what we are looking at because we're already going to digitization, all right? Tim already mentioned FinTech and, and, and MTN as a whole already is working on that. Global Connect is really looking into that aspect over there, all right? Focus, the leadership I've already mentioned. You need the support of leadership, but you can only get that support if you have a valid used case. You know, explaining to uh, the C-suite, this is what we are, this is where we are going, this is what we want to do. This is the trend, this is how it's going. So that's what we need from our leadership. You know, uh, talent, closing skill gaps, create frameworks to support new business approaches and actions. All right, so we need to understand how it is right now. A, a lot of the guys, including myself, did not know anything on blockchain until about at least two years ago. You know, then we started hearing, hearing these buzzwords, smart contract, hyperledger, DLT, so on and so forth. So what does that all mean, all right? Are we equipped enough to understand what it does mean? You know, so the only way to do this is actually get down into it and work with it and see how it goes. And then you learn from there. You know, so that's what we do, close the skill gaps. It has to be talent on demand because if we are not moving towards how we are moving or trajectory wise uh, with regards to technology, are we not going to gain much, much space uh, in this environment? And I think last but not least is, is the challenges. And, and many of the guys already, you know, spoke about this here, but just to touch on a key point of view when it comes to, to Africa specific, all right? And, and we kind of understand, and, and a lot of you guys work with African affiliates, all right? And MTN being one of the biggest uh, within Africa itself, that we still not yet equipped to reach that stage, all right? Uh, we are not yet 100% 4G fully compliant let alone 5G going forward. So what does that mean? And I think one of the questions that the guys put in the chat group, how do we balance uh, BCE or BC with TAP? So, you know, I think this kind of answers the question because we need to run in parallel. You know, it's gonna take some time before all of our MNOs are actually uh, fully compliant with this new technology going forward. So there's gonna be TAP plus your blockchain working in parallel, automation versus your, your legacy settlements. And, uh, and it leads to what Vinny said earlier on, you know, where it needs to coexist. Uh, and we're talking about off-chain and, and on-chain. So that's kind of what it relates to. So we need to understand that this is not something is uh, quick and easy. Uh, it's not going to be done anytime soon. It's all a work in progress. So we need to be able to prepare ourselves for that. Are we uh, early adopters, early adapters, are we still exploring, so on and so forth, guys. Uh, last slide, guys. All right, guys, uh, ladies and gentlemen, taking you through to the roadmap of MTN Global Connect specifically, and uh, we started this journey out in, in 2020. So we did our first POC trial, and, and it was a very interesting outcome has come from there as well with regards to settlements deviations, uh, so on and so forth. So that becomes important. So <clears throat> the guys that have not actually trialed any of these things, I think it becomes important in that sense to go forward with it because you guys will see for yourself. And uh, working with uh, Vinny and, and Charmit and the EGSMA network will help you guys understand how it is working and going forward. You will be able to see, okay, the settlement time is taking uh, six weeks with uh, normal uh, legacies is taking two weeks with uh, automation. Is that true or not? All right. If you're looking at your figures itself, if you quantify it, if the automation tells me I owe a thousand dollars, but my my normal uh, tap will tell me I owe a thousand five hundred dollars. So those are the differences and disputes and discrepancies that comes along. So those are the things that we need to be uh, validating against. Uh, the blockchain and how it's going forward, because there's a lot of talk about the transparency. It's in the, it's immutable. You know, uh, dispute resolution uh, is actually reduced. 
but how do we know that if we don't actually explore it? All right. So MTN has already started the journey. Uh, it's going to take uh, at least another five years or so, depending how far we go. And given the direction from uh, our group at Arne, uh, we know how we're going to go uh, forward with this. So that's about it, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I hope it made some sense to you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much, Adeep. Uh, and a huge thank you to all of our presenters today. Um, now, we have probably just slightly overrun on today's session. So I just wanted to make everyone aware that today's session, again, is being recorded. So there will be an opportunity to review today's sessions and all of the questions that have come in over the course of today. And there'll be some really great questions. These will be available to view uh, on the web as well. So every question that's been asked, there will be uh, an answer to. So uh, at this point, it's probably a time for us to start thinking about closing off today's session. Uh, just to make you all aware, uh, our next showcase live event will cover how eSIMs play a key part in mobile digitalization. Uh, so head over to gsma.com forward slash services forward slash showcase to register now. Plus, you get the opportunity to view any of our past sessions. So again, we hope you've seen some really good examples today of um, of blockchain and uh, its use cases. Uh, and again, if you're ready to go live, better these services, we're also ready to go live as well. So do reach out when you need us. So ladies and gentlemen, at this point, thank you so much for your time. And we hope you enjoy the rest of your day and the rest of your week. We'll say goodbye now. Thank you.